What's going on, party people? It's usually a Friday, but it is Saturday. But you still know what that means. It's time for the 3D. 3D. My apologies for not dropping the show yesterday. I'm a little bit under the weather, so please just bear with me. But of course, thank you so much for listening. My name is Drew Dickinson. And I'm here to talk all things Manchester United. So, what? I mean, let's just get right to it. After a very quiet week last week, United have kind of jumped right back into the headlines. Some interesting headlines, to say the least, the last few days. You know, uh, Eric Ten Hag signing an extension here at Manchester United. More good news that came along with that. Not Enios, but Eric brought in two new names to the coaching staff. And one of them, a Manchester United player, a former Manchester United player. I mean, mean, honestly, a Manchester United legend, if you will, who actually turned down the head coaching job at Burnley to join Eric Ten Hag's backroom staff. And that's none other than the Dutchman himself, Ruud van Nistelrooy. I just so cool. I mean, I most recently the manager of the Dutch side PSV. You remember Rude, just such an elite goal scorer in his prime. And now he's going to bring all that knowledge, all that wisdom to Manchester United and the likes of Marcus Rashford, Rasmus Hoyland, you know, uh, Alejandro Garnacho. They are going to benefit so much from that brain of Rude van Nistelrooy. It's just uh, uh, unbelievable. But that's not it. Rene Hake, he's leaving the go-ahead Eagles in Holland to join United as an assistant. You know, one thing that I'm loving about this Hake um, coach coming into United is that he's got the same principles and philosophies as Eric Ten Hag as far as, you know, player development, the way he wants to play. You know, again, obviously, principles, philosophies, the same. So it's going to make it, – it, it's it's something that – it can help spread the word, if you will. When you have like-minded coaches in the staff who really can hammer on the points that the head coach wants instead of their own ideas, thinking of, hey, how about you try this? No, everybody being on the same page, not undermining one another. It's just going to do wonders for the boys and for Ten Hag. You know, it's two more Dutch assistants who immediately make the United staff stronger. Okay, Let's move right into some transfer talk, shall we? Still still no definite moves for the likes of Jaden Sancho and Mason Greenwood. But just real quick on these two, you know, United do expect both of them back in training next month if a deal isn't secured, which, you know, let's be honest, two very unique situations with lots of question marks for both of them. You know, it was almost certain that Juventus was going to bring on Mason Greenwood, but then their crowd, or their crowd, their fans, their supporters got word of, you know, kind of why Mason isn't with United anymore. And they kind of put the, one of the halt on that move. They don't want anybody like that at their club. But a couple of more Italian sides are looking at Mason Greenwood. And for Jaden Sancho, it's just, you know, it's been pretty, fairly quiet. Dortmund really do want him back. But if they do get him, it's going to be on a loan. They can't afford to pay the 40 to 50 million pound asking price that United want for Sancho. So that's something to keep an eye on with both of them. Uh, As of right now, I I, just like United, I expect them to be back in training next month. I see United not making too many, you know, big splashes until they figure out a way to get those wages off the books of especially Sancho. And, you know, With those two being gone, that's almost 80 to 90 million pounds that United can use to turn around and get the likes of a Branthwaite or, you know, an Ivan Tony who's going to be up there or, you know, a Joao Neves. I mean, come on. But again, that's just something to keep an eye on with those two, especially United are, you know, according to high profile pundits, United are close to triggering that 34 pound release clause to Bologna for Dutch striker Joshua Zerke who's currently away at the Euros with the Netherlands. AC Milan still in the hunt as well, though. They just haven't released, you know, no deal on the commission to the agent, which the agent's fee for Milan is pretty, pretty high. 
So let's hope it's not a smokescreen for Milan to get on their bikes and want to make this deal happen. And Zerky comes to United sooner than later. Everton still playing hardball with United over the transfer of young center back Jared Branthwaite. I'm hoping that when United go back to the table with a 50 million pound bid, that will do the job. You know, unfortunately for United, Everton are using, you know, like since his transfer, Harry Maguire, 90 million pounds, Wesley Fofana, 75 million pounds. So they're, you know, trying to stand on their high horse with the Branthwaite price that they want at 75 million. So let's hope that United can figure out a way to make that happen. I do not think 75 million pounds needs to come out of the Ineos wallet for Branthwaite. I think you need to stop at 50, which let's be honest, he hasn't proven much. One season in the Premier League, 50 million pounds, hopefully and surely will do the job. Again, we'll just have to wait and see. But they, again, they're using those two massive transfer fees. They, as an Everton, using those two massive transfer fees of Wesley Fofana and Harry Maguire as leverage. Now, meanwhile, on to another center back transfer. Ineos are, you know, they're hiring attorneys to find loopholes regarding the transfer of Jean-Claire Taribo from their other club, other club that they own, Nice in France. It's just, it's nuts to me that City are able to find loopholes and get transfers done from their sister clubs, but United can't with Nice. So let's hope the attorney coming to the table has something up their sleeve because obviously they wouldn't be going through these desperate measures. I don't really want to say desperate. I did, you know, fair, excuse me, fair measures to, you know, kind of even the playing field because city, of course, you know, 150 charges, but um, I digress. But uh, again, to kind of elaborate on that, if they're willing to go do stuff like hire attorneys to find loopholes into making a transfer happen from a, from a club that they own, that means the player's keen on the move. So that's what excites me as well. Now, another report coming out from another center back. You know, United need them. You know, Maguire, not, not certain. Varane, gone. Uh, Victor Lindelof could be on his way out if, you know, so, I, I believe I've heard Fenerbahce trying to lure Victor Lindelof to their side of the world. We'll see. But if that happens, United are going to need center backs. And with Enios's, you know, their formula of bringing in young players, it, it fits the mold. Only 24 years old still, and just reported yesterday from David Ornstein from The Athletic that United are considered a move for Bayern Munich and Netherlands center back Matthäus uh, De Ligt. And I, I've wanted De Ligt at United since... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer wanted him at United. And remember, guys, Ten Hag has a history with Delict due to their time at Ajax together. And I just think it's a partnership, mat a match made in heaven. Delict hasn't really gotten off to any sort of hot start since leaving Ajax. Big transfer fee to Bayern. Doesn't even, you know, honestly, he doesn't really get off the bench for Bayern anymore. Unless, you know, he got off, he played a good, he played good in the Champions League final. Let's put it that way. Um, but I should have said he doesn't get off the bench for the Netherlands. So something to keep an eye on. Again, I know I keep saying that, but there's no definites, no positives. But when David Ornstein comes with a story, that means there is something behind it. So I take him at his word, but I'm just really sick and tired of this whole considering a move. You know, we people, you know, on social media and especially United fans joke every year, United are, you know, considering a move fc it, it's just okay we know you can, you're considering it why don't you try and make a move um we'll keep moving on though another one to keep an eye on and one that could really get off the ground here soon is a move for psg and uruguay uh, defensive midfielder manuel ugarte he's um currently away at copa america and defensive midfielder, midfielder, you know, he he he's impressing the United brass. And I, for one, think it would be a, a great fit. What a great, you know, great character and great fit for not just Manchester United, for, but for Kobe Manu. He's a cutthroat, takes no prisoners, takes no BS type of defensive midfielder. And it, it's one of the, the, the signings that I really hope they try and focus on. Casemiro replacement right here, folks. Yeah, and well, not just a replacement, but an upgrade. 
let's be honest, Casemiro aged three years over the summer coming into his second season at United just was not the same. And with reports coming out that he wanted to play the way, you know, he favored the way of an Ancelotti or a Zinazine Zidane's uh, tactics at Real Madrid. So maybe that's why he sulked on the field and didn't want to perform because he was crying and upset that he could, he didn't get his way. Who knows? But I am certain that Casemiro is going to be gone and what an unbelievable replacement Manuel Ugarte would be. He's playing in the Copa America right now with Uruguay. So if you're uncertain about him, haven't watched him play, I really suggest Monday night when they take on USA, give him a watch. He played fantastic soccer against Argentina, the likes of Messi and Rodrigo de Paul in Copa America um, earlier in the tournament. But, you know, more, more on transfers and the outgoings. Again, when more information is available, but some names, again, to keep an eye on. PSG's defensive midfielder, Manuel Ugarte, Joshua Zerke, and Matteo Stilicht. Keep an eye on those three names for Manchester United to sign in the near future. And But but honestly, with a few of them, don't expect much because they're away at the Euros, and that's what they're focusing on. But come July, or hopefully by the end of June, more news and more things will start to heat up regarding the transfers in the transfers in and the transfers out for Manchester United. Okay. So lastly, you know, what's the, what's the deal with the improper treatment of the women's team? You know, somebody asked me on Twitter to, to talk about it and I was ahead of the game. I was already going to, but I wanted to save it for the end. Just, just to highlight it a little bit more. It's just, you know, guys, listen, there's horrible facilities, horrible training grounds, top players leaving on free transfers. Uh, FA Cup ceremony, the award ceremony was canceled because of how the men's team were playing bad. I mean, what does that even mean? How, what, what does the men's team play have to do with the celebration of the women's team who are enduring all of this BS, all, you know, being treated like scum basically but go out and still win an fa cup ladies you know they, they had to you know not just was it canceled but they had to find out it was canceled through social media they weren't they weren't text messaged they weren't there wasn't a whatsapp group set up there wasn't a voicemail a phone call anything they found out through social media and that's just that's just freaking embarrassing okay guys it's embarrassing for manchester united in a recent interview Sir Jim Ratcliffe basically said, you know, they're focusing on the first team, the men's first team right now, and haven't really got too much detail on the women's team. Well, Jim, to put it bluntly, that's bullshit. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but it is. These women just won the FA Cup. These women show up day in and day out in those horrible, horrible conditions and to only get treated like this. It's unacceptable. And it needs to be sorted and sorted quickly. And listen, I apologize for my language. And I'm going to go ahead and end it there because it just frustrates me so much that our women's team is treated this way. And look, I don't blame top players for wanting to leave. I don't blame players for wanting to get out. Who would remember? It was just a, a, just not long ago where Ronaldo went on Piers Morgan and put the club on blast about the men's facilities. But, you know, you heard Sir Jim plain as day say they're focusing on the men right now, which basically means the women are an afterburner or an afterthought, afterburner, an afterthought. And, you know, it's 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 just ridiculous. But anyways, more to speak on that, um, I'm sure in the future. As uh, you know, it, uh, I, I can't even believe we ha- in 2024, I really can't even believe we're having to speak about stuff like this still. But, okay, no, look, that's that's going to do it for me for this week's 3D, the Drew Dickinson Diatribe. Thank you so much for listening right here on the Soccer Down Here Network, wherever you may be. Quick plug once again, tomorrow night at New Realm Brewing, on the Beltline in Atlanta, Georgia, Deep South Wrestling is back in action, this time with Fed Up. Live tomorrow night, New Realm Brewing, 6 p.m. bell time. Come on out, support your favorite independent wrestlers. Scroll of the Great, 
versus Jacob Johnson for the Deep South Wrestling Heavyweight Championship. No disqualification. Could this be the time that Jacob Johnson lifts the Deep South Heavyweight Championship? If you want to know, come on out to New Rome Brewing tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Sunday, June 30th. Thank you so much for listening. Like I said, I appreciate it. And we will speak to everyone next week. Drewski out. Ridiculous.